Okay. Hey guys. Oh, that's nice. All right, guys. Uh, so here's what we got. Uh, writing a poetry analysis essay. One of the things that I included in your uh, Google Classroom um, post was the PowerPoint that goes over poetry analysis essay writing. I suggest that you look at that PowerPoint and uh, make sure that you know it very well. Uh, in this video, I'm going to cover the three major parts of the essay. And it goes along with the thing that I gave you, um, the uh, uh, printout that I gave you of a kind of like a model template for a poetry analysis essay. So I'm going to cover the three major parts of the essay. It's going to be the introductory paragraph, number two, the body paragraphs, and number three, the conclusion. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to have you go over to the uh, the very first paragraph in the essay. And this particular paragraph is going to be the poetry. Okay, so this is going to be the poetry analysis introductory paragraph. A loss of loved ones and multiple hardships drove American author Emily Dickinson to a reclusive life where she filled her time writing dark, melancholic poems. I felt a funeral in my brain is one of her poems that explores how depressed, lost, and sad she must have felt after losing a loved one. She uses the poem to express her descent into depression and her survival of it. Dickinson's repetition, personification, and extended metaphor adds to her meter and rhythm in order to explore how one learns how to conquer and rise from it. <clears throat> so this is the uh, introductory paragraph that we have. And as you can see here, the things that absolutely need to be in your introductory paragraph are title, author, a quick summary, the thesis, and about two to three elements. And then you need the words in order Okay. Those need to be somewhere in there. So as you can see here, we have Emily Dickinson's name right here. Okay. And I'm going to uh, highlight, let me see, I'm going to highlight that pink. And we're going to highlight, okay, so we have the author. Okay. And we're going to make that pink. Okay. We have the title of the poem which is going to be, I felt a funeral in my brain. Okay, right here. And if you notice it is in quotation marks, okay, so make sure that you have taken care of that. And so we have the, whoops, we have the title. Okay, um, and then we have a quick summary. OK, a quick summary. It needs to be. So we have this entire thing right here. This is a quick summary of a funeral in my brain. And so we're just going to highlight that blue and this over here. blue. OK, a thesis statement. And in the thesis statement, I want to see about two to three elements. So we have the thesis statement right here. Okay. And of course the words in order to. Okay, so take a look at this here. We have, uh, uh, so we have Emily Dickinson's name, we have, I felt the funeral in my brain in a quick summary. The thesis statement is down here in yellow and then the words in order to. So these are the things that I'm going to be specifically looking for. You need to make sure that these things are in your introductory paragraph. They have to be in there. There's absolutely no way around that. Okay, so let's go to the uh, body paragraph. Now, as you can see here, this is a very short body paragraph because I'm not going to write an entire body paragraph for you. It's something that you're just going to have to figure out. What we have here is this is going to be the analysis uh, for the body. Okay, and then over here, here's the things that I'm gonna be looking for in here. I'm gonna be looking for the topic, which is gonna cover the first element. I'm going to look for evidence. So, 
far as the topic goes, okay, which is going to cover the first element, okay, and we're going to make this pink, okay. So uh, right here, specifically by, okay, specifically by including repetition, the reader becomes aware of the problem and sounds coming from Dickinson's mind. Okay, that right there is the topic sentence that has the first element mentioned in it. We're going to make sure that we highlight that pink just like it is over here. And then the evidence, okay? So this very next sentence is the evidence. And if you notice, it actually requires you to put something in uh, the essay from the actual poem itself. So this is gonna be that part. And then here is the evidence right here. Okay. So specifically, Okay, so of course we want to get those transition words in there. By including something, by including repetition, the reader becomes aware of the problem and sounds coming from Dickinson's mind. Her mind is going numb from the beating, quote unquote, of the pressure of loss. And at that point, this is where you start using your commentary. You start elaborating on that. This is not something that I can tell you to do. This is something that you do. You are telling me about the repetition that and the sounds coming from her mind, you give me some evidence from that, something from the poem, and at that point, that is when you have to start elaborating. Tell me what that beating represents. Tell me what the numbness is. Tell me, you know, kind of refer back to why she's going numb, why you feel that it has something to do with the loss of a loved one, a descent into madness, or whatever you think it's supposed to be. Okay, so let's take a look at the conclusion. Okay, so we have the conclusion paragraph. So this is the, uh, let's see. Um, okay. And then over here, here's what we're going to be looking for, okay? I'm going to be looking for a concluding sentence that echoes the thesis. I'm going to be looking to broaden for the thesis to answer. And I'm going to be looking for sources of the author's message. Okay, and then over here, I'm going to be looking for reflections of the thesis to the poem as a whole. Okay. So these are the things that I'm going to be looking for. So let's read this paragraph. All in all, another transition, Dickinson's comparison to a funeral, to her descent and survival of madness and depression is personified through her sense, space, and the box in which she must rise above. The poem offers readers a glimpse at her ability to accept and understand the arrival of depression and madness and explore the process and learning how to adapt to it. Readers can infer from her journey that depression and madness are natural after a loss or hardship. So this is a really good uh, concluding sentence because it actually does that. It, the concluding sentence echoes the thesis. So it's kind of like, you know how in, in junior high, we were simplifying it by saying you restate the thesis. Well, here we say you echo the thesis. In other words, you, you kind of mention the thesis, but you expand on it a little bit. Um, and then you broaden the thesis to answer the question, so what? And of course, we must see source, sources of the author's message, okay? So the sources, of course, are gonna be shown here in a minute. And then of course, the reflections of the thesis is the poem, uh, on the poem as a whole. So what we have here is, okay, the concluding sentence. Okay, so we're gonna, or the concluding sentence that echoes a thesis, and then broaden it for so what, okay? So we're gonna highlight this in yellow, and this is this part right here. Um, reflections over here, reflections of the thesis to the poem as a whole. So our reflections is going to be here. And then the very last thing is going to be this right here. Okay. This pink. Okay. Hopefully I've been able to help you out a little bit. It looks like I'm about to run out of time. So 
take a look at this and just make sure that you're in a position to uh, understand